Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Ship operators navigating global trade routes face far more than the vast expanse of the world's oceans. Their journey depends on critical engineering that allows immense vessels to move efficiently between continents. Among the most vital achievements supporting this global network are the great man-made canals. These narrow passageways are the lifeline through which international trade flows. By allowing direct and speedy movement of goods across long distances, they shorten voyages, reduce fuel consumption, and strengthen the global economy. One of the most remarkable is the Panama Canal, a 51-mile marvel that links the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Since its opening, it has dramatically reshaped world trade by eliminating the need for ships to navigate the lengthy and dangerous route around Cape Horn. Instead, vessels now traverse a series of strategic water passages, culminating in the lock systems that raise ships 85 feet above sea level to the artificial Gatun Lake before lowering them again on the opposite side. This engineering feat not only saves enormous time, but also avoids the massive excavation that would have been required for a sea-level canal. Central to the safe operation of this system is a specialized railway transport known as mules. These powerful locomotive-like vehicles run along tracks on both sides of the locks. Despite their name, they do not tow the ships through the canal. Their real task is to stabilize each vessel during its movement through the narrow lock chambers. By adjusting the lateral position of the ship, the mules prevent collisions with the lock walls and ensure precise guidance as the water rises or falls. For more than a century, the Pedro Miguel locks set the maximum allowable dimensions for ships passing through the canal. Vessel length, breadth, and draft were all dictated by the width of these locks and the vertical clearance provided by the Bridge of the Americas. Even today, many ship designs around the world are still based on these historic constraints, known universally as Panamax dimensions. Ships enter the canal through designated access points on both the Atlantic and Pacific sides. Once inside, their transit is controlled by an intricate system of gravity-fed water management. The canal famously uses no pumps. Instead, large culverts built inside the lock walls transfer vast amounts of water in and out of the chambers. By raising or lowering the water level, the system allows ships to ascend or descend according to the elevation of the surrounding terrain. Every movement of the gates and valves is coordinated from highly specialized control rooms. These command centers oversee the flow of water, the timing of gate operations, and the overall sequence of ship passages. Their work is essential for maintaining both efficiency and safety within one of the busiest waterways in the world.
The gates themselves are engineering masterpieces known as miter gates. Each pair forms a V-shape that points toward the higher water level. This design allows the immense pressure of the water to seal the gates more tightly when closed. Despite their enormous size, each gate leaf is hollow and buoyant, reducing stress on the hinges and mechanical systems. Electric motors linked to large gear and strut assemblies operate the gates. These mechanisms transfer power to giant bowl wheels concealed within the lock walls. As the wheels rotate, the connected struts push or pull the gates with smooth, controlled motion. Beneath the lock chambers, a network of giant tunnels directs water through side and center culverts. This system gradually equalizes water levels between each chamber, permitting the gates to open only when the pressure on both sides is balanced. It is a process that ensures the safe movement of every ship, from cargo carriers to naval vessels. In 2016, the Panama Canal Expansion Project introduced a new set of larger locks. These were built to accommodate the massive Neo-Panamax-class ships used by modern shipping companies. The expansion incorporates advanced water-saving basins that recycle a portion of the water used during each lockage. Although this system does not fully operate at all times, it represents a significant step toward reducing the environmental footprint of the canal. However, the future of this vital waterway faces serious challenges. Climate change has begun to reshape rainfall patterns across Central America. Rising temperatures and prolonged dry seasons have led to more frequent and severe droughts. As a result, water levels in Gatun Lake and nearby reservoirs have dropped below historic norms. Since these lakes supply all the water needed for canal operations, any reduction directly impacts the number and size of ships that can transit. The situation illustrates the vulnerability of even the world's most advanced engineering works when confronted with environmental change. The Panama Canal stands as a reminder that global trade depends not only on human innovation, but also on the stability of the natural systems that support it. Battleships are giant armored warships built to rule the waves with their incredible firepower and heavy armor. These ships were also known as capital ships for a nation's fleet. The battleships served the country from 1944, playing important roles in Pacific battles before hosting Japan's formal surrender on September 2, 1945, the end of the long and costly battle against the occupation and empire of Japan during World War II. Along the Delaware River, a remarkable operation is underway as tugboats guide the legendary battleship New Jersey toward dry dock in Philadelphia. Once the pride of the United States Navy, this massive Iowa-class warship is now preparing for an extensive restoration effort meant to preserve her for future generations. Commissioned in 1943, the battleship New Jersey served in World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and later in the 1980s when she received modern combat systems. At more than 800 feet in length and displacing more than 50,000 tons when fully loaded, moving this warship requires careful coordination.
Even in retirement, the ship towers over the crews working to bring her safely to the shipyard. To begin the transit, a team of powerful tugboats surrounds the vessel. These tugs provide precise control that even a ship of this size cannot generate on its own in tight waterways. Their engines push and pull in coordinated movements, slowly guiding the battleship through the river channel. Line handlers on deck assist with securing tow lines and maintaining stability as the ship moves. Weather conditions, tide levels, and river traffic all play an important role in the planning, ensuring a safe approach to the dry dock entrance. The journey to the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard marks the first time in decades that the New Jersey has left her museum berth. Once aligned, tugs ease the massive hull over the dock platform, where the water can be slowly drained. Inside the dry dock, crews will inspect the hull, remove marine growth, repair steelwork, and restore vital structural sections. This restoration is essential to protecting the ship from corrosion and to keep the New Jersey in stable condition for public display. Tugboats come in various types depending on their function, including harbor, seagoing, and river tugs. Seagoing tugs, also known as ocean tugboats, are designed for long-distance towing and are built to withstand harsh ocean conditions. One notable example is the USS Tawasa, a fleet tug weighing 1,255 tons and measuring 205 feet long, which played a crucial role in towing a nuclear depth charge during Operation Wigwam in 1955. Depending on the situation, these types of tugs often tow ships using a wire cable or a synthetic rope. There are also specialized tugs like the Notch Tug and Integrated Tug and Barge, or ITB, units, which are designed to push or lock into a barge for more efficient towing, especially in calmer inland waters. Harbor tugs are smaller vessels designed primarily to maneuver large ships in ports and harbors. Harbor tugs have advanced propulsion systems, such as azimuthal stern drives, or ASD, or cycloidal drives, allowing 360-degree rotation for positional control. A modern design of a tugboat is the Spitzer Tier, a Danish tugboat constructed in 2011 for escorting ships in European ports. The harbor tug function extends to escorting tankers and other large ships through hazardous or narrow areas and ensuring safety during harbor maneuvering. Tugboats, either large or small, perform a critical function in global maritime operations, whether the job is to navigate through a busy port or assist in working with heavy-duty ocean towing. Handling a giant ship is challenging, and sometimes accidents happen in cases of mishandling, as seen in one of the famous incidents in the Suez Canal. A large vessel grounded in the Suez Canal blocked one of the most important shipping routes in the world. This required urgent efforts and operations to refloat the vessel and resume an important part of global trade. The Suez Canal Authority deployed construction equipment to dredge and excavate some surrounding sediment to float the vessel. The dredging involved removing dredged sediment from around the vessel's bow to deepen the channel to 18 meters. In doing this, the vessel will eventually be freed from the bottom sediment. The dredging process involved the dredger Mashaur, desanding and desludging beneath the vessel. At the same time, long arm excavators on pontoons were used to carry out the infill excavation closer to the vessel where the dredger could not, with a minimum of 10 meters distance to keep safe. 
Depth sounds of geometric monitoring were made with sonar technology to confirm the depth of progress made with the dredger and excavator operations. The dredging involved dredging, excavating, and hands-on monitoring, all simultaneously in a demonstration of the extreme complexity of freeing the vessel during the balance of the other operations underway at the same time to resume the canal's navigation. Whether stabilizing a massive cargo ship above Gatun Lake, towing an 80-year-old battleship through a narrow river channel, or dredging a grounded vessel from the floor of the Suez Canal, maritime crews face challenges that demand patience, coordination, and deep technical understanding. Their work often happens out of the public eye, yet it ensures the commerce continues, that history is preserved, and that vital shipping routes remain accessible. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.